You know, we really should apologize to Nintendo for making fun of their DS naming scheme previously because it appears they're not the only ones who do that. If Razer's late 2016 Blade wasn't enough for you, NVIDIA is now back with their third iteration of the Titan X, which is, of course, alongside their multiple iterations of the Shield brand name, so it's not new to NVIDIA either. This new Titan X is actually called Titan XP. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by the Computex Conference, which runs from May 30th to June 3rd in Taipei, Taiwan this year. Computex is the biggest event of the year for PC hardware and technology, where we preview the newest prototypes before they come to market. We highly recommend attending or following this event online for industry professionals and enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. So very important here, Titan XP, the new one, not, the, not to be confused with the other one that came out a few months ago. Uh, this one has a lowercase p, so that's important. That signifies the difference. Uh, previously, we called the Titan X Pascal card Titan XP, as did most other media, because uh, the reason of, for that was because we had Titan X Maxwell before. So there was Titan X, and then Titan X launched, and now there's Titan XP. Uh, so the differentiation is getting a little difficult. This will make things, of course, suboptimal if you're buying or selling secondhand online, because I, I can almost guarantee you at some point, someone is going to accidentally buy a Titan X Maxwell or a Titan X Pascal 2016 edition card when what they mean to buy is something like a Titan XP Pascal 2017 edition card. Uh, so the new card, let's go through the specs and, and kind of get on track here. The new card is called NVIDIA Titan X lowercase p. There's no GeForce GTX in there. They have distanced it from the gaming brand in that way. It is just NVIDIA Titan XP, no GTX. And further, it's got some similar specs to the previous Titan X Pascal from 2016. Uh, it's got 12 gigabytes of G5X, so the same GDDR5X setup as previously, except one important thing, which is that they are now running the faster Micron memory as found on the 1080 Ti that launched very recently. Uh, so that is operating at 11.4 gigabits per second, whereas previously the Titan X was at 10 gigabits per second, as was the GTX 1080 non-TI. The 1080 Ti shipped with memory that's 11 gigabits per second, and this is 11, 11.4, uh, more or less the same. So that's been updated. There's also been an update to the actual GPU, the chip that is on the PCB. That, P that GPU for Titan X lowercase p is, uh, is housing 3840 CUDA cores as opposed to the previous Titan X capital P Pascal card, which had 3584. So 3840 on Titan X lowercase p and 3584 on Titan X capital P. To do this, assuming the everything's the same, which for the architecture probably is, the only reason it wouldn't be is if they're pulling something out of GP100 territory and doing some kind of focus on FP64 or something, which I don't think is the case. Assuming everything's the same, which is a fair assumption, uh, basically, you're looking at two extra SMs because it's an extra 256 cores. You pretty easily divide that by two. You've got 128. So two SMs uh, because each SM is 128 CUDA cores. So that's an increase of about 7% in core count and not always a linear increase in performance, but that gives you an idea as to the overhead versus the original Titan X capital P. And this may end up being the biggest of the big Pascal chips, meaning that there will probably not be another refresh after this. This is more or less the max that Pascal can do. Now you look at something like GP100, I think that has 56 SMs, but the SM layout and the organization structure is different with GP100 because it's an accelerator card. So one, uh, GP100 cares about different things like double precision. It's got FP64 allocation in there. And then uh, two, it's just a different SM and, and organizational structure. So for GP102, uh, and the line that we're familiar with in this space, this looks like just a Titan X with an extra two SMs and the memory change. It operates at 1600 megahertz. We're not really clear on how high it can go under the right thermal conditions yet because we don't have one, but uh, 1600 megahertz is the advertised rate. Other than that, I, there's not much more, I guess the price, well, there's, there's two, two more things that are important, price and Apple news, I guess. Uh, so on the price, it's $1,200. That's what Titan X capital P was when it launched. Presumably that will be reduced in price. 
and now you can get Titan X lowercase p for $1,200 instead. Uh, this is, just to kind of be clear, not something we would recommend for basically all of our audience. If you are gaming and you want the highest end GPU, Vega notwithstanding because it doesn't exist yet to purchase, if you want the highest end GPU, still 1080 or 1080 Ti is what you should be looking at. This is not going to get you a lot more performance, especially if you look at the Titan X capital P benchmarks we did last year versus the 1080. Um, the performance gain, there are definitely diminishing returns there. So in terms of your value, you should not really be considering this necessarily as a gaming device. But for professionals, potentially it's worth looking at primarily because there's Apple support now. So that means Hackintosh will start working with the 10 series cards. That's kind of interesting. Not really our coverage spectrum, but I'm sure some of you care about that. Uh, so Hackintosh will be compatible. There's the driver update for Apple devices. Presumably this might indicate that the Titan X lowercase p will be implemented in some of the forthcoming Apple devices. That would be a safe assumption. Uh, and that's really all the info we have for you for now. So not sure if we're gonna have benchmarks for this one. It's not really in our wheelhouse uh, in terms of, I, I mean, we're just, we're probably not gonna recommend it for gaming. So why would they send us one? But we'll see. Uh, if we do, we'll certainly do videos, do hybrid builds, all that stuff. Otherwise, stay tuned for the other coverage. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.